accident last week. <laughs> um, I'd like to start by saying what a privilege and pleasure it is to be here in this great, great city, Manchester. It often gets a, a bad rap. People say it's full of working class Labour supporters. But there's much, much more to it than that. Um, it should be very proud of its great history. The start of the Industrial Revolution, the, the railway, the, uh, the bouncing bomb, and of course, more than all those two, two things, and Manchester City and United combined, is of course, the Trafford Centre. <laughs> what a marvellous place this is. Walking around, I just am so impressed with the attention to detail and the decoration. Um, the interior decorators here have done a fine, fine job. And what a marvellous example the food court is. So many choices. So many different choices of food. I, I often think if the Romans were here today, they'd love to sample all the foods. But of course, there wouldn't be any room, so they'd have to build a vomitorium where they could regurgitate the food and then move on to the next shop. But uh, before I start, um, before I start signing the books here, I'd like to read a couple of extracts from my new book, I Partridge, We Need to Talk About Alan. Um, the book is uh, available in all good bookshops and some bad ones too. Um, but I'd like to read a couple of extracts to give you an example of my thought-provoking and searingly honest autobiography. Now the first passage is about, um, I feel a bit like a, a, a vicar up here. <laughs> I'm not a vicar. I'm a pastor. Um, the first passage is about my time in the early 70s when I was at East Anglia Polytechnic. Um, and now I decided when I was a student not to live in the uh, student's accommodation but to remain at home with my parents. <coughs> Some people uh, regard this as, as an act of weakness but to, it, in fact it saved me a lot of money and I was able to spend that on some rather snazzy clothes. <laughs> I'll continue. Of course living at home meant that I was something of a mystery man on campus. While my fellow students lived in each other's pockets and played out their divorced lifestyles, I was far well less known. I'd be glimpsed at the back of lecture halls, ghosting through the student union with a glass of cider, or shushing idiots in the library. <laughs> and then I'd be gone. This all added to my aura, and did my idiosyncratic dress sense. Thick knit zip up cardigans, flared brown corduroys, and shiny black pepper pot robes <laughs> set me apart from the long haired layabouts who bore an uncanny resemblance to the Guildford Four <laughs> and some of the Birmingham Six. <laughs> Irish long haired layabouts wrongfully convicted of bombing England. <laughs> it was a time of sex, drums, and rock and roll. I know for a fact that I could have developed a pretty impressive booze habit. And, I, and had full sex, had it not been for the fact that I was expected home from 6 to 6.30. <laughs> You'll notice I said full sex. Oh, I dabbled all right. <laughs> Gentlemanliness prevents me from uh, recounting some of the early incidents involving my nascent but powerful sexuality. But suffice to say, I was no frigid. <laughs> I did quite a lot of kissing. Some of it vigorous enough to chap lips, mine and hers. <laughs> On other occasions, I enjoyed erotic and informative afternoons with a student whose essays I was writing. <laughs> Years ago, I'd have been too foolish to discuss this, but I'm happy to now. I can recall those eye-opening afternoons with me and Jemima sitting bollock naked on her bed. <laughs> me exploring her body with my quivering hands, while she coquettishly feigned indifference by reading album sleeves or smoking. Young I may have been, but I was confident enough to speak my mind. This strutting young cock certain Alan would often dish out compliments as he perused her body. You're a really busty woman, Jane. <laughs> One of the bustiest on campus. Thanks, she said through her cigarette. You've got quite a long torso, but your legs aren't in the least bit thick. Believe me, if I didn't have lectures, I'd love to kiss your back from top to bottom and from side